It's a $1 scientific calculator in a plastic bag. I was shopping at Dollar Tree recently and I noticed they're selling these scientific calculators under their Jot brand for $1. And because this is in such a thin plastic bag and it comes with a battery, there's nothing stopping you from just using it in the bag. So if you ever have some important calculations to do and you don't have a calculator on hand, just stop by your local Dollar Tree. You can use this all you want. I mean, there's usually only one or two employees in the entire store, so they probably have more important things to do than try to kick out people using their calculators. So you can just camp out in Dollar Tree and do your math homework, and when you're done, just put it back on the shelf. And it has to be probably the smallest scientific calculator I've ever seen. I mean, if you compare it to a standard four-function calculator, it's about the same size. On the back you can see imported by Greenbrier International, which is the company that runs Dollar Tree. And they even list the exact date that the battery in it was made, the 9th of April 2021. And it says the battery contains mercury. So let's unbag it and take a closer look. There it is, the $1 electronic scientific calculator. I mean, isn't it obvious it's electronic? Has there even been a mechanical scientific calculator ever made? I guess that's the actual company that makes it, Scenery Electronics Limited. And there are those tiny buttons with a lot of sub-functions. The main number and function buttons are a little bit bigger, but they're still pretty small. Turn it on, you get degrees, radians, or grads. I still don't know what a grad is. Never had a reason to use it. Typical functions like sine, cosine, tangent. Oh, you can do hex and octal and decimal. That's good. The first thing I typically do to test the accuracy of a calculator is to do the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. The answer should obviously just be 2. And we do get 2, but a lot of cheaper calculators you get like 1.999998 because it doesn't have enough precision to give you the real result. And a similar test is to do 1 divided by 9 times 9, which obviously should just be 1. And it is on this calculator. But if I do that on the good old Commodore, 1 divided by 9 times 9, I get 0.9999999. So the accuracy of this thing is better than the first generation Intel Pentium. Oh, I forgot to take a look at the owner's pamphlet, which it comes with. It says, thank you very much for purchasing our electronic calculator. To help ensure its longevity, do not touch the inside of the calculator. Okay, I guess you can take it apart just as long as you don't touch anything inside it. And avoid, and avoid hard knocks. So this is not a calculator for a hard knock life. And unduly strong key pressing. So light touch only. You can't use it below freezing. Okay. I'll remember that. Don't take it on your ski trip. Or above 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So don't take it to Death Valley either. For servicing, contact your retailer or nearby dealer. Yeah, like somebody's actually going to service a $1 calculator that came in a plastic bag. Special care should be taken to not damage the unit by bending or dropping. Does it really bend that much? Not really. For example, do not carry it in your hip pocket. So this is not for hipsters. I like how they give automatic power off an acronym, APO. And they say it will automatically turn off approximately 8 minutes. Yeah, they built it and even they don't know exactly how long it'll take until it turns off. Now I want to try the hex conversion thing. For example, 255 converted to hex is FF. And switch back to decimal. And the capacity of a Commodore 64, 65,536 bytes converted to hex is 10,000. And of course you can convert the other way too from hex to decimal. 
For example, the printer port location of the original IBM PC, 3BC hex, convert it to decimal, and that's 956. And it does binary too, so 255 decimal converted to binary is 11111111. Or in hex, as we saw earlier, FF, or in octal, 377. It does have a random number generator, which generates random numbers between 0 and 1, although it only has 3 digit precision, so it's really not that great. And everyone in the US knows the square root of 3, because 1732 was the year George Washington was born, and it's 1.732. And if you try to do an overflow, for example, by doing all 8s times 2, it goes into scientific notation, except it doesn't put an E there. And it can keep going all the way up to E99, but above that, you finally get an overflow error. And it does have a backspace, which is nice. This little button here. It generally is pretty responsive, except if you do a cube root. For example, I'll do the cube root of pi, and you can see it took a little bit to come up with the answer. But for something that sells for a dollar in this day and age, I guess I can't complain too much. I'm sure many of you wanted to see what it looks like inside, so here it is. And as expected, it's pretty much exactly the same as the basic four function calculators. You just get a membrane keyboard. A single blob chip doing everything on the back of the LCD and a single LR1130 battery even though it looks like there's space for two and at least it doesn't have a fake solar cell I think my video about that ended that trend in these cheap calculators